Hi, I'm Sabine Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The Teaching of Hannah Kerb. Hannah Kerb has been around for a long time. In fact, it was invented by Hannah, it's a person, in, I guess, 1927, if I'm not mistaken. And since then has been used quite a bit to design inductors with a gap, power inductors that have to store energy with DC current through them. However, today it's not used that much because we have, I think, better tools to do the design. However, I think that Hana Kerf can teach us a lot about magnetics in general, and in particular about power inductors with gap or distributed gap. And this is the objective of this presentation. First of all, to develop this curve to show what's the reason for this relationship that we see here, and then to see how we can use it, first of all, to understand the inner working of a power inductor, and also, if we wish, to use it as a design tool. So the HANA curve, the basic HANA curve, looks like that. We have here on the x-axis NI over LE, LE is the magnetic path length here. N is the number of turns of this uh, inductor. And I is the current. And on the y-axis, we have the energy. Actually, energy is Li squared over 2. So this is related to energy. Divided by the volume, the volume of the core. So this is energy density. And then we have here markings here, which are actually related to the length of the gap. Actually, it's the ratio between the length of the gap to the magnetic path length, here, this ratio here. And as we can see, as we go up, for any given particular energy level, or Ni over Le, we do have a certain gap that we must have, and that is for a given material. Now, as I'll show later on, this ratio of the magnetic path length over the length of the gap is in fact the equivalent relative permeability of the core. So this ratio relates directly to the equivalent permeability. And the equivalent permeability is the magnetic path length over the gap. Here it is shown in the reverse uh, relationship that is the length of the gap over the magnetic path length, so this is 1 over mu, okay? So what we see here is that there is a fixed relationship between Ni over Le and the energy density, and that as you go to a higher energy, okay, energy storage, you have to use a lower and lower permeability. It's kind of counterintuitive, but that is the fact. That is, the higher the energy, the lower should be the permeability of the core. So what we can see here is the following. First of all, the stored power density is a function of Ni over Le. Okay, this is this function here. No matter what is the shape of the core. This is a universal curve. It's not related to any particular core shape. But it is related, as we'll see, to a B max, that is the maximum magnetic flux density that you allow. Okay? So this is the curve here, and we see that the energy is related to Ni over Le. And again, it is a universal for any particular ferromagnetic material. And then we understand that air gap is a must. And it is a function of the power density. I mean, you cannot design a power inductor without a gap if you have a limitation of saturation, of B max. So the higher the power level, the longer must be the gap. So let me start with a distributed gap core and see how we can get this uh, HANA curve from the basic relationship around this magnetic element. So we have a core here. We have N turns, and this core has a relative equivalent permeability of mu sub e. This material here is actually a mix of ferromagnetic material and inert material. So this mix has a certain lower permeability, and as we understand, this is what we have to have, okay? So when we specify 
a powder core, say, toroid, then aside from the dimension, we have to also assign a equivalent permeability, which is related to the amount of power that we will be able to store in this element or to the current that we can pass through it without going into saturation. And the saturation is, of course, due to the BH curve of ferromagnetic material. We have a sort of a linear region here, and then we have the saturation region here, and in a particular design, we don't want to go beyond a certain B max. It could be closer to B sat. And so this is the maximum that we can allow for a given case. Now, the equivalent magnetic field, this is an equivalent magnetic field because you have two materials and you might say that each material has its own magnetic field. But if you look at the whole body, then you can sort of def define a magnetic field overall, which is Ni over Le. This is Ampere law, of course. And this is equal, of course, to the magnetic flux density divided by the total permeability. This is the vacuum and the equivalent permeability of the material. Okay, so this is very basic. Now, starting with Faraday's law and the state equation of an inductor, equating these two and taking the integral, I'm getting this relationship, and walking it out, I'm getting finally this relationship here, which is already the HANA curve. This is the energy density. This volume comes out because we have the magnetic path length and the cross-section area. And then, then there is the B max, and here is the magnetic field related term Ni over Le. Now, usually we plot it in a log log scale. So in this case, we have the log of this energy term or energy density term plus log of B max and then log of Ni over Le, which means that for different B max, we're going to have a shifted curve. And here it is. For a given B max, we have this curve. And for another B max, a higher one, we have a shifted curve. And again, what this curve is telling us, Ni over Le is related to the energy density. And this is, again, a universal relationship, no matter what is the core. And now the position of this line is dependent on the B max allowed. The higher the B max, the more energy you will be able to store. But now comes another issue, and that is the permeability, okay? Now, we don't know anything about the permeability here, but, and now from this relationship, and here we have, again, Ampere's law, this should be magnetic field, but it is equal to B max over the permeability. We can get this equation for the permeability, which tells us that for a particular case of Ni over Le, from Ampere's law, the permeability must be this value, and I'm rewriting it in this form. So this is a constant, and here, lo and behold, it's one over Ni over Le, this thing here. So this is telling us that if you have a high Ni over Le, meaning a high energy density, you must have a lower permeability. So on this curve, for any given Ni over Le, we have a permeability which is going down and down here as Ni over Le is increasing. So this is the HANA curve. Now it's interesting that by rewalking this equation, we can get some relationship which is kind of very interesting. And what I'm doing here, I'm replacing N times I peak by the area of the window. That is, this is where the wires are going through this core. This is the window area. And why is this? Because for a given current, we need a certain cross-section area of the wire. So if we have N wires, then we need a certain area of the window, winding area. And there is some constant here of what is the current density per millimeter or whatever. So we can replace this by the winding window area. 
And by doing this, we get this relationship, which is kind of very interesting. Here, I've moved the volume to here. And by that, I got two areas. One is the winding area, and one is the cross-section area. And we call this product the area product. So this is actually a different way of designing cores with the area product approach. And you can see that it's just another way of looking at the HANA curve. And what this actually tells us that for a given Li square over B, okay, we need a certain AP, area product. And this is again a way of designing inductors, which I'm not doing here, but it is very interesting that everything sort of comes together. Now, if we look at this equation, we have on the right side what is actually required of the inductor. We need a certain inductance, and we have to pass a certain current without the inductor going into saturation. We are to be on the verge of saturation, you might. On the left side, we have actually information about the core. This is the material, and this is the geometry of the core, okay? So this relationship now is being used by manufacturers like magnetics, here it is, this is magnetics, to actually devise this plot here, which is very useful for selecting a core. What we see here is on the x-axis, we have Li square, which is this term here. On the y-axis, which has to be B max, time a constant, and this is the area product, they already show us a specific core, this is the catalog number of a core, which has these parameters. So once you know Li square, you go up and you find the core that you need here or here, to access here, this is the catalog part number of the core, and this is because each core has these parameters which are related to the particular Li square that you need. Also shown here, are the permeability, and as you can see, these are the permeabilities. They are starting at low energy level. The permeability is relatively high, and as you go to a higher and higher energy level, permeability is going down and down, and here it's already 25. Actually, this is 14 already. So this is basically a HANA curve reworked for a special application. So let me now move to the gap inductor. There's not much difference, except that we have a gap rather than a permeability uh, of the material itself. But the gap actually defines a equivalent permeability, and I'm showing it here in this relationship, starting with Ampere's law, and then reworking it, we find that the permeability or the equivalent relative permeability of this core is this relationship of Le over Lg. And this is for the case that the permeability of the ferrite is much larger than this ratio. Now, this ratio is the permeability we are working with. It will be like 200 down to maybe 15. So it's a really small number as compared to the permeability of the ferrite, which would be like 2,000 to 5,000 maybe. So this is the actual relationship and this is the approximation, which is pretty good. So therefore, rather than having an equivalent permeability, we have just a ratio between the magnetic path length and the gap length, which is the original HANA curve. And here I'm showing it again. So we have here, this is Ni over L, this is Li square over the volume, and here is the gap, which is increasing. So the permeability, which is one over this term, is decreasing. So this is the original HANA curve. So what we see is that given Ni over Le, this determines the energy density that we can have, and also it fixes the permeability for the case that we would like to work up to a given B max. So this curve is for a given B max, as we have seen for another B max, it could be a shifted curve. So the permeability is going down, and this ratio is going up 
that is the gap is becoming larger and larger. Now, as I've said, the HANA curve is not used anymore today as a design tool, but nonetheless, I'm giving here some suggestion of how you can use it for a design. So you start with the current that you have, the inductance that you need and B max of the material. You calculate Li peak square from this information. And then you also calculate the cross section area that you need for the wire because you need, you know, what is the current and then you have the current density of the wire. Now, once you have this, we go and choose a core that we think will be okay. Calculate the number of turns for the information we already have. And then calculate N I peak over L E from the information we have of the core and the given requirement. And then if you multiply it by the B max, which is the maximum magnetic flux density that you like to reach, this should be equal to this. And then you can see, knowing the volume, if you can get this energy, twice the energy. If not, then you choose another core and then iterate until you get a core that has the right energy level. And then you can go and calculate what is the permeability that you need from this relationship. Everything is known here. And once you have the permeability and the magnetic path length, you can, of course, calculate what is the gap. So this will be an iteration type of a design, selecting a core, seeing through this HANA curve, selecting a core, and then looking here and seeing if you get the energy that you need. If not, you select another core, get another number here, and then see if you have the energy that you need. Now, let me add here a word of caution, and that is that the HANA curve was designed for the case in which the saturation is the limiting factor of designing a power inductor. That is, that I have a current and I don't want the inductor to get into saturation due to this current. Today, when we work at high frequency, there is another limitation, and that is the heat that develops due to the core losses as a function of the ripple. Actually, it's the ripple current, which is causing a ripple in the magnetic flux density B. Okay, so at high frequency, the limitation today is not B max in terms of the DC current, but rather the maximum ripple that you can allow for B, for the magnetic flux density. And this, in fact, will cause that you cannot utilize the full magnetic flux density that you have in this in a given material because you have to limit the magnetic flux density to a lower level so this is not covered by the hana curve so one should be aware about that now this issue is discussed in this video in this youtube video and here is the link and i'm going to print the link in the description section of the video that you are now watching, I highly recommend it because it is a limitation which is kind of overriding the limitation of the DC current and therefore the DC current today is not really the limitation of designing a power inductor. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.